Like I said earlier, uh, three actuaries standing by, Karibu Sana, lady and gentlemen. Now, the most interesting uh, thing to happen recently is, of course, the fact that we now have an actuarial academy in the region. And uh, this is something that for many people might not raise eyebrows, but is something really big for this sector. I'll start off with you, uh, Mukami, the fact that uh, we really haven't managed to train a lot of actuaries in the past. Um, thank you, thank you, and thank you for having us on the show. Um, yeah, we're very excited uh, to be launching the actual Academy of East Africa. Um, we, as the actual Society of Kenya, have been in formation for the last 16 years, and really we've seen the need to offshoot uh, the training and education arm into the actual Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something we're doing regionally uh, because uh, we've seen that Kenya currently um, is representative of the only qualified actuaries in the region. So you have just over 30 qualified actuaries. Actually, we have 38 qualified actuarial members, but some are based in South Africa. So the ones in Kenya are currently around 30. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the other East African countries, we see the lack of that capacity. Mm -hmm. So this academy is actually uh, established to be able to support the up and coming actuaries through the qualification process that uh, mm -hmm. the other members have gone through. I hasten to remind our viewers that you are the secretary of uh, the entire organization, the Actuarial uh, Society of Kenya. How come we are not uh, training as many as we should? We have literally five, six universities with this class. If they start off at two, three hundred people per year, what happens along the way? Well, you can say we're not training as many as we should, but we've come a long way. Um, we've come from, I think, when I was in university, uh, less than five actuaries in the country. So we can actually see that our growth has been somewhat exponential. Um, why not as many people are qualifying is because A, the path to qualification is a strenuous one. You have to pass 15 actual professional examinations which are, which are internationally certified. And that process can be a bit grueling and we see people, okay, I would say, falling by the wayside. So I think it requires a lot of passion and determination in terms of um, attaining that qualification. I want you to hold that thought right there, uh, to bring in uh, Murad. Uh, the fact uh, that uh, you're able to give us the international perspective. Uh, you are the country director for the Financial Services Volunteer Corps. This is supported by USAID. What exactly is the international perspective on this matter? Well, um, the international perspective is that, first of all, thanks to USAID, this allows us to add an international component mm -hmm. to our work. Um, We've been present in East Africa since 2011, focusing on uh, strengthening and harmonizing the regional uh, financial ecosystem. And uh, we've been focusing on three key, key areas, which is pensions, insurance, and microfinance. Mm -hmm. And I think in all three areas, directly or indirectly, um, act the actuarial science can play a very influential role. And we... Um, teamed up with a task for about a year to help them not only build their capacity, but through the provision of experts like, uh, like Holly, mm -hmm. uh, give them an international perspective on how to go about uh, developing this actual, the, the actuarial science regionally. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I want to bring you in at this point, uh, Holly, you are a volunteer with the, the, the program, the Financial Day Services Volunteer Corps. And the perspectives that have just been shared, the fact that uh, Kenya and mostly East Africa and indeed the whole African continent not uh, being as well serviced in this field as it should be, right. what does that mean to our financial services? Well, there's, I think, uh, two things I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. One, that Kenya, while it only has 30 internationally credentialed actuaries, mm -hmm is far ahead of the East African community. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to them through the Actuarial Academy to grow the number of actuaries in Kenya, but also, and I'll give you two examples. There is a woman I've worked with in Tanzania who only needs support from a credentialed actuary to finish passing her exams. Mm -hmm. The same is true of a gentleman in Burundi. So to me, this idea of the Actuarial Academy, very forward thinking on behalf of the society, is going to strengthen the insurance sector in Kenya as well as the region. Um, now, why should someone care who is not, you know, what's mm -hmm. the big deal for mm -hmm. a consumer in mm -hmm. Kenya or a consumer in the East African community? Yes. Actuaries help in two ways. One, they make sure that the consumer pays the right price. 
pays what they're supposed to given so if I'm a good driver yes I should pay less than a bad driver mm -hmm. and it's actuaries who help insurance companies figure that out if I'm a consumer I want my company and all actually all companies in Kenya to invest in Kenya right mm -hmm. I want my money going back to make the economy better mm -hmm. actuaries help companies understand how much money they have to invest, mm -hmm. how much they can put back in the country. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it's clearly to the benefit of a Kenyan citizen to have money invested back in the country. Mm -hmm. I want to pick on something you just said that, uh, for example, bad drivers, to focus on insurance first, uh, should basically be paying more two notorious uh, classes uh, right here in Kenya, one Matatus, and uh, several companies uh, recently came out and said they wouldn't insure a certain class of BMWs and uh, Subaru cars, the lighter versions. So there is a problem here, but uh, the insurance companies are going after this with a big stick rather than simply saying you pay a bigger premium. What is the disconnect? Uh, well, the disconnect is trying to use to measure risk. Mm -hmm. So the actuaries will be looking at the auto insurance market. Yes. There are actuaries in each mm -hmm. of the companies in yes. Kenya right now. Yes. And they're going to look at that and they're trying to say what risk is presented and how do I price it given the car, given the driver's history. Mm -hmm. So it's going on in the companies now. And then you also have the Kenyan Regulatory Authority for Insurance, mm -hmm. and they're going to make sure the consumer's protected. So the company out here is going to say, this is the price I want to set, and the regulatory authority is concerned with whether that price is fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to come back to you, Murad, the fact that uh, this has been an area uh, that's uh, been a real sticking point for the region. Penetration of insurance at 2.96%. Until very recently, uh, financial services in terms of maybe banking and deposit credit, that sort of thing, not really having much penetration outside of M-Pesa. Mm -hmm. What do you think the program can do to be able to sort of uh, speed things up, uh, ensure that we start to see more of these innovations playing a key role in uh, pushing these services out to the people? Right, well, if you look at East Africa, and East Africans, they're very technologically savvy. Yes. If you look at how successful M-Pesa is here, as opposed to some of these products have had a harder time uh, taking off in other countries. Just the fact that people transact through their mobile mm -hmm. phone mm -hmm. means that this is a very easy medium for financial, for insurers, for example, for pensions, for banks generally to offer products through this and this is one of the mediums to, uh, to, to, um, that this can be launched and I think it can happen in East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumbai, I want to come to you and the fact that uh, this is a program and uh, it seems uh, that uh, it's just starting off. What do you, we need to do to ensure that first there is uh, support across the board? We hear of a financial services authority coming up in the not too distant future. How do we make this an integral uh, part of something like that? The fact that we have a banking school that uh, trains bankers around the central bank of Kenya. So what do we need to literally mainstream actuaries into this uh, sort of sector? Um, yeah, thank you for that, and I think that's an important issue. Yes. I think what we need to do and what we have started doing is uh, engaging the regulators in Kenya and in the region in terms of um, having memorandum of understanding uh, between the academy and the, the regulators in terms of what the academy will provide and how the academy will help to upskill the market. I know the other thing that the actual society is doing uh, is inputting into the FSA bill. Mm -hmm. So there's a proposal we put in place, or we suggested that you know, there should be a government actuarial department, yes. yes, in the FSA, and that can really drive or encourage, you know, what the academy is doing across the region. And if it's also pitched at a ESA level, then it's something that we can do ESC wide uh, with all the regulators on board. And that's part of the work we are doing this week mm -hmm. in terms of engaging the regulators and uh, coming up with MOUs that we can get on board on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to come back to you, Murad, very quickly for a parting shot. The fact that uh, at 2.96 penetration for insurance, there's still a huge potential out there. What's the one key thing we need to get right for the insurance sector? And of course, extrapolating that for the other parts of the financial sector. I think for, other than um, devising or the, the, the appropriate insurance uh, products, mm -hmm. new products, new products, mm -hmm. uh, be it agriculture, yes. um, health, 
life, just the, just the broad range, mm -hmm. but most importantly, getting those to the end consumer. Yes. How do you reach the end consumer, mm -hmm. and how do you raise awareness mm -hmm. about the importance mm -hmm. of such products? Mm -hmm. uh, you are where the rubber definitely, uh, literally meets the road. What do you think needs to get done so that we can see, in, if we say ten, five to ten years, we have made literally a good progress on the aspects as, as such as this? I, market penetration is, is key. Mm -hmm. We want Kenyan consumers and consumers in the region to have access to a wide range of products. Mm -hmm. So in the next five years, I'm hoping because of the development of actuaries mm -hmm. that they help design new products. Mm -hmm. So we can get better fire products, flood products, things that make a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So in the next five to 10 years with the growth of actuaries through the academy, I think you'll see new products mm -hmm available and that will help the average Kenyan. Okay. Thank you indeed uh, very much for taking the time to talk to us, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Thank you. It's an interesting conversation and one that is really important to us here, the fact that the financial uh, service penetration continu continues to be a key sticking point for this region. We'll definitely be checking in on you to see how well you